Welcome to this House of Books. We have with us today Robin Newman, who's uh, written uh, another children's book. It's called Don't Call Me Fuzzy Butt. And uh, Robin, I'll just, just ask you briefly, uh, this sounds like, uh, you know, as a children's book, this sounds like it could be kind of a serious topic. Uh, what, what inspired that? Um, my son had inspired it. Um, and um, um, he um, came home one day um, in a not so great mood and said some words that he shouldn't have said. And uh, so that's sort of where the idea started um, for the book. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Well, um, why don't you go ahead and talk about the book? Okay, so I was gonna give you a little bit of background uh, on myself and then go into the book if that's okay with everybody. Sure. So um, yeah, so um, once upon a time I had been a legal editor and um, an illegal editor's job is simply um, to make a writing better. And uh, we're, anybody who writes anything can be is basically an editor of their own work. And they should think of their role as an editor when they're working on their own writing. And so as a legal editor, I worked on these big books called treatises and they explain how laws worked. And even though I was pretty happy doing that, I always had this feeling that something was missing. And I kept on thinking about working on my own books, but the books that I wanted to write had absolutely nothing to do with law. I kept on thinking about writing stories about witches, mice, pigs, and peacocks. And so one very scary day, I quit my job and I took my first writing class and I absolutely loved it. As soon as I walked in the room, I knew I had found my people. And to this very day, I still take writing classes and I am a member of the Bank Street Writers Lab and it's a wonderful group for published authors. It's a critique group and the group was founded in 1937 by Lucy Sprague Mitchell. And um, it's been an incredible um, uh, source uh, for me um, in terms of improving my writing and I am so grateful to them. So a huge, huge kudos, uh, kudos and thank you um, um, from me to the Bank Street Writers Lab. And while um, all this was going on, the most amazing thing happened to me. Um, I became a mom and this is Noah. And somehow Noah convinced me that we needed some pets, but he didn't just convince me that we needed one pet. He convinced me we needed two pets and we got two dogs and this is Cupcake and Madeline. And they both also wanted to give a huge shout out to this house of books. We love this house of books. And and now I was going to talk about a little bit about where you get ideas for books. So my one of my first books was this book called No Peacocks, and it was inspired by my sons. Uh, he was very fortunate to go to school, and on his on the grounds of his school, there happened to be three peacocks, and their names are Phil, Jim, and Harry. And from the moment I saw the birds, I knew I wanted to write about them. There was just this teeny tiny little problem. I just didn't happen to have a story. And I was very fortunate that one day I happened to be attending one of the book fair meetings and somebody came into the room and announced, did anyone leave a stroller on the porch with a sandwich? Because one of the peacocks just came in and ate it. And as soon as I heard that, I knew I had my, the, the concept for my story. And I, I literally, while I was sitting at the meeting, started writing. And then, so that's how No Peacocks came about. And then, um, as I mentioned earlier, so um, Noah uh, was, um, came home one day in a really, really bad mood. By the way, this picture was just taken for uh, demonstration purposes only, just as an FYI. And, um, and he said some things that he probably shouldn't have said, and I certainly won't repeat them. And it got me thinking, you know, um, about a book where Bear said a bad word. And that originally was the title of my book. But the more I dug into the topic, um, the topic seemed to not just be about right, saying something that one shouldn't say, but it was also became more about name calling and gossip and all the hurt feelings that ensue from those kinds of words. And so gradually the book evolved and it became don't call me fuzzy butt. And so now I'm going to uh, read that to you and I hope you enjoy it. So here we go. Bear needed a lot of sleep, 243 and a half days to be precise, anything less and he turned grizzly. 
The bear had a problem. He was a very light sleeper. The slightest noises woke him. Falling pine needles, rustling leaves, a single raindrop. So he needed earmuffs and a sleeping, bag, a sleeping cap. He posted signs everywhere, quiet, do not wake sleeping bear. And he chopped down trees to make a sturdy front door to keep the noise out of his den. On hibernation day, Bear took off his bunny slippers, put on his jammies and turned out the lights. Before Bear could say salmon and honey and to toasted pumpernickel bread, he was asleep. Now, Woodpecker was also having a problem. He was a master carpenter with a specialty in real estate development. He loved building houses. Every day he pecked holes in his favorite pine trees to make his perfect houses, 20 pecks per second to be precise. But lately, his houses were disappearing. What happened to my rustic ranch, cozy cottage, and solar-powered duplex? Woodpecker went looking. <gasps> he asked Rabbit, who talked to Mouse, he called Squirrel. No one had seen a thing. He posted flyers around the neighborhood and even offered a reward. Wanted. Houses. Reward. Bugs. One morning, Woodpecker noticed something on the ground. Wait a second, is that my door? And Woodpecker took a closer look. Oh, my words, and that's part of my roof. Wood, Woodpecker kept his eyes glued to the ground. There, he found bits and pieces from each of the perfectly packed houses he had built. And these bits and pieces became a trail that led him straight to Bear's new front door. My houses, exclaimed Woodpecker, but all of his houses were destroyed. So Woodpecker went straight to work. Peck, quiet, Bear grumbled. Peck, peck. Bear pulled the covers tight and started counting buzzing bees. Peck, 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 and peck. That last peck was the last straw. Bear's fur bristled, he brows twisted, his nostrils flared, and from his very big mouth, very sharp teeth, 42 to be precise, he roared a mighty roar. Who's the pesky feather butt making that noise? Rabbit, mouse, and squirrel could not believe their ears. Bear called Woodpecker a feather butt, rather gapped a mouse, who then blabbed a squirrel. Excuse me, did you call me a pesky weather butt? Asked Woodpecker, flying right up to Bear. That wasn't nice. No, I called you a pesky feather butt. Good night. Bear crawled back into bed, tossed the pillow over his head, switched off the lamp, and quickly fell back asleep when... Peck. Sniffle. Bear hid under the covers. Peck, peck, sniffle. He flipped and flopped with every peck and sniffle. Bear switched on his lamp, grabbed a tissue, and opened the door. Here, said Bear, blow your nose, stop pecking, and stop crying. You called me a pesky feather, but in front of everyone. I'm sorry, but if I don't get my sleep, I become a great snarl, big growl, grizzly roar, bear. Well, you destroyed my houses. And if I don't peck holes, I can't fix him. And I become a very peck, annoying peck, grouchy, peck, 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 pest. What are you going to do about that, fuzzy butt? <gasps> Rabbit, mouse, and squirrel could not believe their ears. What the heck are called bear, fuzzy butt? Rabbit gave to mouse who confided in the squirrel who then blabbed to bears. Uh, I'm right here. I heard what he said. Bear stomped. He roared and he slammed the door shut. Good night again. Nobody had ever called him a fuzzy butt. He crawled back to bed and turned out the lights. I'm not a fuzzy butt, Bear whispered to his teddy bear. In the darkness, there was a faint sniff. There was the sound of a faint sniffle, and be sure it wasn't coming from Woodpecker. Woodpecker quietly opened the door and flew into Bear's den. Then he switched on the lamp and handed Bear a tissue. I'm sorry, Bear. I didn't mean to call you a fuzzy butt. I'm sorry too. I didn't mean to call you a weather butt. I mean a feather butt. I mean, apology accepted, said Woodpecker. So Bear and Woodpecker put their heads together and came up with a plan. Woodpecker pecked while Bear hammered and sawed. They re repaired Woodpecker's houses and moved them far, far away from Bear's den. They also made Bear a brand new door. Then Woodpecker tucked Bear into bed. See you in the spring. Before a bear could say salmon and honey on toasted pumpernickel bread, he was sound asleep. Shh. Bear slept 243 and a half days while Woodpecker pecked his holes 20 pecks per second to be precise. When Bear woke in the spring, Woodpecker could hardly wait to ask something. 
what's a feather butt? Oh, I don't know. What's a fuzzy butt beats me. And I'm at the story. And I just wanted to mention, um, we all have those moments when we turn a little grizzly. And I have another book that I got to work on, uh, which is a Sesame Street book called Breathe, Think and Do with Elmo. And in this book, um, when we all have those moments of frustration or anger, it really does help to take a moment to breathe, take a deep, deep, deep breath in and take a deep, deep, deep breath out. And then it does help to think about maybe three ways that you might be able to solve your problem and then just go about and do it. And if it doesn't work, then just try something else. And uh, Breathe, Think, and Do with Elmo uh, releases sometime in July with Running Press Kids. And um, I also wanted to let you know that the illustrator for Don't Call Me Fuzzy Butt is this amazing illustrator called Susan Batori. Um, she happens to live in Hungary and uh, unfortunately cannot be here um, for this um, uh, recording. Um, but she did send uh, a little quick video with her process on how she went about illustrating the book. And so I hope you enjoy that. And after that, um, I hope you'll enjoy the trailer for Don't Call Me Fuzzy Butt. It's super, super adorable. And on a very last note, I just wanted to say thank you to this house of books. Please support this house of books and all your independent bookstores. And that's the end of my presentation. And I'm going to end that there. So I hope you enjoy that. This is Bear. He's an extremely light sleeper. When I say extremely light, I mean the slightest noises will wake him. Falling pine needles, rustling leaves, a single raindrop. But if Bear doesn't get his much needed 243 and a half days of sleep, to be precise, he turns grizzly. Wait one second. Who are you calling grizzly? I mean, um, well, you. At least a little grizzly. May I continue? Sure. Go ahead. You're not going to let me sleep anyway till the trailer's done. So, to keep the noise out of his den, Bear chopped down some trees to make a solid front door. You would think that would be the end of the story, but no. Turns out those trees included homes built by Woodpecker. 
He's a master carpenter with speciality in real estate development. He pecks holes in his favorite trees, 20 pecks per second to be precise, to make his perfect houses. And sure enough, Woodpecker has been noticing a problem. What happened to my rustic ranch, cozy cottage and solar powered duplex? Well, I'm sure you can figure out what happened. And guess what? Woodpecker and Bear may have called each other some not so nice names that this narrator refuses to repeat because they are beneath his dignity. Name calling is extremely rude and hurtful and completely unacceptable. Do you two understand this? Yes. We get it. Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to return to the trailer. Will Bear and Woodpecker be able to patch things up, literally, before Bear loses too much sleep? Don't Call Me Fuzzy Butt is brought to you by the crazy talented author illustrator team Robin Newman and Susan Batori. Yes, they paid me to say that. The book is published by Sleeping Bear Press. It gently drifts off to bookstores, libraries and bear dens everywhere on March 15th, 2021. Pre-order your bedtime reading today. Good night. Find the teacher's guide to Don't Call Me Fuzzy Butt at Robin's website, www.robinnewmanbooks.com. The teacher's guide includes activities to promote social-emotional learning and a craft project to build birdhouses like those seen here. <laughs>